Political godfatherism is a system of government in which an influential party member assists another member in leadership. And in a layman's term, it is referred to as the jugabans of the political parties who detect the social political happenings of the states or the political parties. So today our focus is on godfatherism, a threat to Nigerian democracy. Political godfatherism in Nigeria has eaten deep into the nation's political space and economy. It has led to political slavery, perpetual leadership and dogmatic citizenship. They are individuals who continually annihilate opportunities for impoverished credible candidates and impose on the free will of the citizens. These individuals do not only have the financial power to win over a state or an election, but also veto power which usually comes with violence corruption and cohesion. I believe that these godfathers are mere financiers of a campaign. Consequently, the impact of the godfathers on Nigerians' general elections was unprecedented. Godfathers are those who have the security connections, extended local links, enormous financial weight to plot and determine the success of a power seeker at any level of a supposedly competitive politics. Although godfatherism has an institutionalized future in Nigerian politics. Godfathers have become a scary phenomenon in Nigerian politics. Godfatherism in Nigeria, particularly in its current form and character, is distributive, though it is a long-standing and deeply rooted feature of the cultural values of Nigerian society, where it is purely socio-economic in nature and mutually productive for both parties. Its politicization would appear to have contributed to the criminalization of politics. Godfathers reign across all spheres of the society, academics, legal and religion environments. Godfatherism is no threat to democracy. No. It's an article or a contest for developing even Nigerian democracy. Because you agree with me, if we follow the path of truth, you may have that interest to contribute your quota to development of our country, Nigeria. When you have that interest and you don't have the whereabouts to achieve that interest, it dies in you. So if I have interest to contest for a position, for example, and I don't have somebody that I will run to when my effort cannot complete the process, then that interest and that desire to contribute my quota will die in me. So depending on how you look at God Fatherism, but for me, I will see the possible aspect or positive aspect of issues because godfatherism from the way me I look at it is a concept that has been corrupted it's supposed to be mentorship when you say mentorship you pick somebody you see the quality in that person you contribute your quota to developing that concept in that person that idea in that person you encourage the person to bring it up Forget about politics. Even outside politics, you look at even every working sector, even in the marketplaces, there are godfatherism. So if we look at it from that end, godfatherism is a concept that we should develop in order for persons who have that desire to develop this country will have opportunity to shoot that target and come up to that responsibility and contribute their quota in terms of developing that our country we so desire. Other only the name Godfather is somebody who will assist, who will serve as a role model. Somebody who you will look up to, who will be of assistance, immense assistance, and guide you for the purpose of achieving positive and very effective and efficient means of imparting the lives of the citizens if you are a politician. But the negativity the name has connoted for some time now has brought uh, a, a disdain and disrepute to the appellation of uh, that word Godfatherism. And the way it is now is becoming a threat to our democracy. It's becoming a threat 
to the positive development of, of our society. It's becoming a threat to the development of our polity. And in a situation like that, it becomes an anti-democratic forces or factor in our political evolution. So, be that as it may, I want to say with all emphasis that the word God for that reason ordinarily ought not to have been a negative uh, well, uh, phenomenon. But the usage and the application in our modern socio-political evolution is what is now connoting it negatively. But anything that will be a threat to our democracy must not be encouraged, must be discouraged. And as it is now, the word or the usage of the word Godfatherism has brought negativity, has brought opprobrium, has brought so many, many things that we negate the principle of democracy. So if our democracy is to be threatened by the appellation or the use or the adoptation of the word Godfatherism or Godfathers, then I will subscribe to the idea of it being dropped. Our politics obviously carry every element of having a godfather. Whether the godfather is for the right reason or the wrong one, that depends on individual interpretations. There has always been godfatherism in anything that we do, whether it's politics or whatnot. It kind of stands as somebody who stands for you or gives you the nod or rather the guide as to what you should do or how to go about it. But sometimes, that, that instance is sometimes metamorphosized into some kind of oppressive demand from whoever in quote, the Godfather is. In Nigeria in particular, looking at the way things have turned out in this country, whereby we're still crying every day to have basics, um, uh, basics put in place in terms of what, what are needed by the people in terms of welfare, then the issue of Godfather is constantly knocks on everybody's doors and, and instead of mine. So I would, I would say in the Nigerian context, it has not been very good. Even in, in, in other developed nations, they also have godfathers too. So, but um, however, I've seen instances where godfatherism is used as a political tool to attack innocent um, uh, players in the industry. Um, for example, there are times certain people in government to claim and say, well, uh, he, wants to be, he wants to bully me around, push me around, and he's my godfather or whatnot. But I don't really think, in, in a large context, Godfather, as you may say, it, is, is a bad thing. It's it practically, I believe, the way they apply it that makes it an issue. So in, in politics in Nigeria, I personally don't really believe that Godfather exists. Um, I've known instances, I've been involved sometimes in this political game, that people can use it as a yardstick to give excuses as to why they're not performing. So. Um, I think it's an opinion thing, whether or not Godfatherism has been of a good will or a good thing or if it's a bad thing. The dichotomy across board as to how you can define Godfatherism, I just feel like it is a tool that is used for the wrong reasons. I know people demand for unnecessary things at times. I know that certain players in the political industry can demand for certain things at times, but to just narrow that to being an oppressive Godfather, and which obviously make people curious and talk about God for that reason. I think it's probably put in the wrong context. Democracy is a government by the people, a form of government in which the supreme power is vested in the people and exercised directly by them or by their elected agents under a free electoral system. The right to vote or be voted for was murdered before it was bathed to the nation. Democracy designed to bring out rule of law, free and fair elections, independence of judiciary, political equality, and respect of fundamental human rights, but took a different turn with the advent of chronic godfatherism in the political scene. The Nigerian democracy is characterized with rigging elections, political violence, bribery and corruption, looting of funds, disenfranchisement, and electoral malpractice. Nepotism tribalism, bureaucracy, insurgency, and religious disputes. Politically, everywhere, you cannot shy away from the truth that there should be a godfather. Life itself needs a godfather. Apart from your biological father, you need a father, a man also you can look up to, 
that will take you through the line of your field. I'm, I'm aware that you are also aware that in your line of duty as a journalist, there's a mentor, somebody you look onto, that you see that you want to be like this man. It's, uh, I think, a journalist that was born in Nigeria should be proud to say, Awolowo is a godfather. So I think politically, looking at it, one want to really digress a little. Godfatherism is supposed to be of the positive nature, but our leaders have turned it the way around to, to now, like Kajo and Mame and pin down their godson after lifting them up to the political limelight. So I think, but so also, do we also have a positive godfather? In, yes, you cannot also shy away that there's positivity in some because there are some people that we are not even worthy of becoming a counselor. And the man from nowhere brings you up and made you, let's say, a senator. So to me, nature itself on your own is that your loyalty should be to him. And first of all, to him, I mean, even before your people, the truth must be told. Come by the time we try to like uh, shy away from the truth to say, where well, you don't need a godfather. If you don't need a godfather, how can you, how will you be shouting in a terrain where godfathers belongs to? So we must at least have pray for a positive godfather. If you have a positive one, that will make sure that you, the, the blueprint it gives to you are things that people will see and be happy about. I think it should be something welcoming. But when you have a negative godfather that uh, make sure that all his pockets will be filled before even you going outside to answer other people. I think that is when people will start saying this is a negative godfather. It's a mass prayer to have a positive godfather politically because that is the only way too you can be in the terrain. Nigeria political space is on its own on godfatherism. You cannot take it away. Godfatherism in real sense was nothing bad. It was created by the Catholic, as we all know. Because when I was growing up, I was a Catholic. So we know how Godfatherism came into play. It is somebody that helps you. It's somebody that carries you along. It's somebody that makes you become what he expects you or believe that God expects you to be. So that's, the, first of all, the, to define Godfatherism. So it is not something negative. What we have in Nigerian politics, we call Godfatherism. It's an, with another identification. That identification is because when I'm your godfather in politics, I tell you what to do, I demand, I tell you this is the contract you must give me, and all those things. So it was now becoming an oppressive situation to who is in governance. That was when the situation came up that no man is God. And when no man is God, that means no man is godfather. So when you come to that point of view, you now say, okay, those people that call themselves Godfather in Nigerian police, we need to flush them away. Because the way they play the Godfatherism was not the way it's supposed to go. So we now started fighting them to go away. But if we look at it from political aspect, there's no way you can do without leadership. There's no way you can do without the elders which are the leaders of the party because they have been there. They are the one to recommend you. They are the one to say, this person has done well for this party. But fortunately, people will take them for godfathers. But I don't see them as godfathers. We have what I could term predatory variant of godfatherism. Uh, predatory variant of godfatherism. Uh, where those in quotes who mentor their... Uh, uh, um, those who are their subordinates are driven by pecuniary interest, access to possibly state treasury or federal treasury, as the case may be, for personal aggrandizement. Uh, so that's why I said that in a context, it's not that it's bad to have godfathers. Like kids have godfathers, uh, young folks have godfathers in different uh, sectors or fields of uh, endeavor, people have godfathers. Uh, but the way it is practiced is what makes a difference. The clamor for democracy in Nigeria is to improve both
political and social economic situation of the country through massive involvement in the policy making but reverse is the case as those that attained political power in both legislative and executive arms of government got to the seat of power through the support of some political godfathers in various states come the center however the desire of political godfathers is to hold political and social economic powers both at the center come the component units as mechanisms to politically influence the activities of political office holders that is the governors and some legislators in terms of appointing people into various positions such as ministers or commissioners chairman of the boards secretaries to the various institutions as well as a location of some developmental projects into various localities within the state or centers as well godfatherism i look at it from two perspectives even i have that philosophy that man is god to man but where you overdo it or you put your instinct say oh this thing this is the way I, I want it without looking at the other people's view then it means you are opposing where you are opposing as a godfather it is not good some people also look at me as a leader or a godfather so it depends on the way somebody behaves democracy it has come in Nigeria if you want it to stay Number one thing to fight is the issue of uh, godfatherism. Yes, I want to thank President Muhammad Buhari. If not that, he's a man of his words and a man of discipline. This issue of corruption that he's fighting, if he has allowed godfatherism to play in it, he could have long failed. Therefore, the issue of Godfatherism, I urge all Nigeria to wake up and fight the issue of Godfatherism. However, we as citizens must begin to eradicate this menace that has eaten deep into the nation's political structure. We must begin to emancipate ourselves from the beliefs that constrain us as a people. Rather, we must ask intelligible questions that would ensure voting in credible and accountable candidates because the current situation also lays credence to the effect of godfatherism in our democracy. So far so good, godfatherism is not supposed to be a threat to our political system in Nigeria. And with what you've heard so far, you can be able to tell for yourself the positive and the negative effect of godfatherism in our political system in Nigeria. From Benin City, Caroline Okonji.